Michigan State lost again to Duke. I think that's the fifth time Coach K has defeated Michigan State in the tournament. Michigan State head coach Tom Izzo joining us on the program. Were you aware of that number, Coach, that uh, Coach K has uh, ousted you five times in the tournament? Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of all those numbers. <laughs> you don't know any of the wins, but you know all the losses. Yeah. <clears throat> what could you have done differently? Well, the game plan was not to let them get into the paint. Um, and they drove us to death at the end. I thought we did a poor job of, of uh, taking away the paint in the last five minutes of the game. And they got in there and got fouled, made some tough layups. Other than that, I thought we played awfully well, to be honest with you. They're a very talented team, good team. Um, we did a decent job. We just couldn't finish the job. Conversation with Coach K. Uh, did you talk pregame or just postgame? You know, we talked pregame for a minute, but nothing about anything that's uh, relevant. And then a little bit after, but maybe a little more in the hallway after the press conference, you know, and uh, – I mean, uh, you got to respect what he's done, and I appreciate what he's done for basketball and definitely for Duke. But uh, during the game, it was all about uh, wanting to win, and both guys wanted to win. And he did for the fifth time on the seven <laughs> that, as you as you remind me. I know. I should have I, I should have started with something more like, hey, man, boy, that was a great coaching effort yesterday. And instead, I lead with the negative. So. My bad. Well, we're two and two in the last four, so you could have led with that, but I don't blame <laughs> you. I, uh, I, I said that's uh, that's been a nemesis for me that I haven't been able to take care of, and now I won't get that chance again. But when it, does it enter your mind at all during the game that this could be Coach K's last game and you're going to take him out? I think more before the game than than during during the game. It's just you know, as they say, once the ball's tossed, all those things are forgotten. Um, I thought about it in the last twenty seconds when we were down six and they were shooting free throws, but other than that, uh, didn't think about it during the game. You were pretty animated, like you were laughing. I don't know if you were laughing to avoid being angry at the officiating, but. The, the, the camera caught you laughing a few times. Your head was on the scorer's table one time. What what are you thinking about there uh, with the officiating? Oh, God. Are you trying to get me fined? <laughs> I have to borrow money from you. I don't think no, you I can get was, fined I for this. I thought it was a pretty well-officiated game. I, I, I thought there was one stretch when there were three calls in a row in the same possession. Um, that bothered me. Yeah. But other than that... Uh, I don't care. I got, uh, you know, it was a little bit of a home court advantage for them, you know, playing right in their backyard. And, and, uh, but, uh, well, that's all I'll say about that. Well, they can't find you if you say something like the officials were terrible in that game. Oh, uh, they weren't terrible. Uh, they were just, uh, there were times, uh, inconsistent. Just, yeah, there was a little inconsistency, uh, you know, but, um, I wouldn't say the officials cost us the game. Uh, we didn't take care of business. He had a five-point lead with under five minutes. Um, but I, I think where, where Duke really did a good job, <clears throat> when they got beat by North Carolina, at the end of that game, I thought they just settled for threes and were firing the ball all over. And in our game, they didn't at all. One kid hit a big three, but other than that um, – they drove the ball, got to the free throw line, and that's what you do. Uh oh, that's the NCAA. No, uh, I got rid of them. Okay, yeah, you don't need to hear from them. That 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 might be a five thousand dollar phone call. No, right now I don't think the NCAA does much. You know, they don't, uh, <laughs> there's not. Uh, I think they're afraid I'll sue them. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the NCAA does much of anything. When do you look at the game film of of the loss to Duke? I did at uh, 11 o'clock last night on the way home. I watched the whole game. And, oh, boy. Uh, but then I'll watch it today, you know, and just so it's fresh in my mind and then uh, and then move on, you know, either try to figure out who you're going to recruit or who's transferring or which portal you're going to go into or who's going to pay somebody or all the good new rules that we have today <laughs> that I can't stand personally. But the game has changed so much. I mean, you talked about some of these things with the portals, but 
but just the philosophy that everybody thinks they're Steph Curry. How do you as a coach encourage or discourage somebody from taking those those threes? You know, uh, that is a fine line because I think every kid now, if you're seven foot, uh, there's no such thing as being inside. Everybody wants to be a shooter. <laughs> um, the problem is there's not many Steph Curry's. And uh, I like the way Draymond does it out there. He knows he's not Steph Curry, so he just gets Steph Curry the shots. And yet trying to encourage somebody in college to do that is is a little uh, more difficult. Well, it might be as hard to find a Draymond Green as it, as it is a Steph Curry, when you think about it. I think it's harder. I, I think that's a great point. You know, even in your point guards, you know, getting guys that make other players better, as Magic would say, is harder. Everybody wants to make themselves better. So uh, that's one of the challenges we have. And if you don't score more points, you don't get as much NIL money. If you don't get more uh, rebounds, you don't get as much NLI money. So um, kids have different uh, reasons now to do things that make it a little more difficult and why I think you're seeing some coaches stepping down. Tom Izzo, 54 tournament wins, eight Final Four appearances, ranks fifth all time, and uh, winning percentage in the tournament just over 70% as uh, third behind Coach K and John Calipari. What do you do differently in the tournament? There's certain coaches we talk about. Certainly you're one of those where we go, uh, Michigan State, NCAA tournament. You know that Izzo is going to do. Jay Wright's another guy that comes up. But I know you have to have talent, but there's something – is there anything you're doing differently as, as opposed to the regular season? You know, Dan, I think you develop a culture where kids start believing that, you know, even though it's not true. I mean, uh, I said our fans think I golf, you know, November, December, January, and then start working <laughs> in February and then, you know, do something in March. That's not true. But um, I think some of it's the culture, the former players, you know, everybody just has this belief and, uh, I got to get them to start believing that in December. That's my next goal. So this year, I'm going to try to work the whole six months (laughs) instead of one month. Um, You're tied with Coach K for the most consecutive NCAA tournament appearances at 24. I'm I'm rooting for you to beat him next year. Yeah. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Um, And maybe I can since he will not be there. (laughs) Yes. Otherwise, I think I'm three and 13. I mean, you would probably have the stat there because you're a stats guy. Yeah, you're you're three and 13 against Coach K all the time. But, yeah. I, but I was not bringing that up. I gave you a positive. I told you about the eight Final Four appearances. Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, we got that in 27 years. He's got 12 and 42 years. So I guess I'm still in range of that one. But uh, oh, he's earned everything he's gotten, you know, and and yet, I think we've uh, we've done some incredible things here, with uh, some to go, Dan. We're gonna we're not done yet. The is that green shag carpeting that you have there? It's not shag. I mean, we're not in the seventies okay. when you were in college. We're in, uh, you know, it's it's very cut pile. Okay, is it like astroturf? <laughs> It should be, you know, I'm a football fan, so maybe that's a good thing. Maybe I'll change the Astro turf. Maybe we'll get a little tougher. Are you a are you a Lions fan? Well, I am because I'm in this state, but I grew up a Packer fan. I live 90 miles from Green Bay, and uh, everybody in the UP where I'm from is a Packers fan. Did you ever uh, meet Bart Starr or Brett Favre? I did, you know, because of my buddy, Mariucci, Bart Starr, came up to our golf outing in the UP a couple of times. He was great. And Brett Favre came once or twice, and I got a chance to meet him, too, through Mariucci. But uh, those guys were great. Haven't met Aaron Rodgers yet, but uh, maybe someday. Well, he's there for maybe another couple of years. So maybe you, why, why don't you go to a game? Oh, I've gone to uh, – Couple Packer games. Um, yeah, because you take September, October, November, and December off, so you could go uh, to a lot of games there, Coach. <laughs> uh, you're so right, um, <laughs> but I, I do. Uh, Matt Lafleur is a guy that spent a lot of time in the state of Michigan as coach, so I do get over there. In fact, talk to Matt during the playoffs. So I hopefully I'll I'll get over there at one of his uh, summer workouts. When does your voice sound smooth? 
you know, it's been really good this year, but I didn't get much sleep. And to be on the Dan Patrick show, yeah. I said, I don't care if I got up, got to bed at four in the morning, I'm getting up early. Who's really? got the worst coaching voice? Worst coach, Bob Huggins. <laughs> Bob's got to have the worst voice. Uh, or I tell Bob he looks the worst. So <laughs> you don't want to get him angry, though. Uh, I love Bob. He's he's one of the good guys in the profession. Doc Rivers has a voice that has never yeah. changed, right? That That's a coach's voice. You know what? Doc does, and uh, Doc's been a good friend, too. I coached in the Goodwill Games with him few years ago and uh he does a great job and he's got a great voice and he's always tired too because how would you like to do that for no. 90 games no. like they do no way uh hey great to talk to you as always thanks for uh getting up and joining us and uh there's always next year right thanks dan maybe thanks. uh we'll, we'll get together with those dayton flyers sometime yeah yeah well dayton should have been in i agree yeah that was disappointing after, you know, a year ago where they could have won it all with uh, Obi Toppin and that team. They might have been really have. as good as anybody. Uh, thank you, Coach. Great to talk to you as always. Thanks, Dan. That's uh, Tom Izzo.